Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my new tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I made my Nintendo 3DS out of it with all the things looking like they're flying out of the screen and whatnot. So, um, there's quite a bit to do in this tutorial, so sorry if I go a bit fast, but yeah. So to get started, you want to import your footage into After Effects, and I've got mine here, which is just me pretending to play my DS. Now what you need to do is render this as a JPEG sequence, so go Composition, Make Movie, uh, Best Settings, make sure it's all full, and then click the Output Module, and Format Change to JPEG Sequence, and Format Options, make sure it's uh, Best, and then click OK, and then you want to output to and choose an output folder so I'll go into uh, here and yep yeah. and then click render alright so once we finish rendering the video as a JPEG sequence it's time to go into Mocha for After Effects to motion track it now you can use the motion tracker which is built into After Effects but this will get a lot more accurate so click the create new project option up there and import clip and click choose now you want to navigate to uh, where you just rendered your files, so mine is here. Click the first one and click open. You want to make sure your frame rate matches up, so 25 FPS is the frame rate I used, and the rest is all pretty good. So once you do that, you want to create the area for Mocha to track, so click the X spline tool up here. And you want to select an area that Mocha can track. So I'm just going to go around the top screen here because there's a few uh, speaker holes and whatnot that will make good tracking points. And then just right click to uh, end your selection. And then you want to click the track forward tool here. Alright, so once your motion tracking has finished, you want to go back into After Effects and uh, clear your render queue by just deleting that and going back to your actual composition go to the start of your timeline make sure this is the same uh, duration that you rendered as a JPEG sequence otherwise the tracking won't line up so go layer new null object alright and then I'll create a null object now go back into Mocha and export tracking data down the bottom hill. Copy to clipboard. And then you can minimize that. And click edit and paste with your null object selected. And that should paste the tracking data in which it has. So now we'll just rename this to tracking data by pressing the return key and muting our volume on our clip just because we don't really need it and closing out of Mocha and you can save it if you want alright so now that we've got our motion track done we want to actually start editing our footage here so the thing I did was we'll just open up my folder here I filmed me playing some Ocarina of Time on a Nintendo 64 emulator um, so we'll just drag that in and then we can drag it onto our composition then again mute the volume because we don't really want volume and then scale it down so it fits in your screen so just pretty much keep adjusting it and it's pretty easy if you press T to bring up the opacity and uh, you can drop the opacity to help you line it up a bit better alright so uh there we go, I've finished that, and you can raise the opacity. You can see mine isn't perfect, but it's good enough for this tutorial. Now you want to link it to the track point. So, uh, you can see our tracking data here. What you can do is get the parent tool, which is this little spiral, and drag it from the Zelda gameplay uh, layer, and drag it to the tracking data layer. And now it should uh, pretty much copy all the keyframes from the tracking data and it should technically stick to our footage, which it does. So now that we've got that, we want to pretty much start putting it all together, like making the grass and the rippies fly out. 
and if you're curious about the bottom screen all I did was mask out that little map in the corner and put it on the bottom screen and put some old paper textures there to make it look a bit older anyway uh, so we'll get right onto the grass and the rupees and whatnot so if we go back to my folder here uh, you can see I've got this picture of a rupee which I there's the original and I just colored it in Photoshop to make it look a bit brighter and green and we'll uh, import that and then I've got this three pictures of little grass so we'll drag those in as well now I'll quickly show you how to do the grass and yeah drag all three of your grass clips in like that and then what I did was highlighted the ball and went layer pre-compose and we'll just call it grass one because he cuts the grass a few times in the game so we want it to happen a few times so it's just an easy numbering system and then double click to open up your pre-composition and then what I did was duplicated this twice or so and uh, yeah then what you need to do is pretty much individually animate them all to fly out in different directions so if we go back to zero and select all the layers press P to bring up the position and set the stopwatches and we'll say about uh, three quarters of a second or so we want to start animating them all so we'll drag this one out and drag this one out and pretty much try and get it looking a bit random because you don't want them all flying out in like a similar direction and I'll just leave it at that for now and if you look on your keyframe lines here or whatever you want to call them uh, if you click that square there you can see these two circle tabs pop up which you can drag and this is just a good way to uh, I guess create like a falling movement like with the gravity and whatnot so you can add that in if you want I had that on all mine because I think it looks a bit better than if they're just flying straight so now if we watch that you can see they all kind of fly out and then what you can also do is keyframe the scale and the rotation so they look like they're spinning out and add a bit of motion blur and they'll all look a lot better and then you come back into your footage here and line it up with when he cuts the grass in the game and then you pretty much have the effect and that's pretty much it for the grass and you just repeat that and it's a lot of fine tuning to make it look right but yeah it takes its time and uh, the rupee follows the exact same process and uh, yeah so I'm not going to bother about showing that just repeat the process that you did with the grass but for the rupees now two other things that I had was I had a rupee count in the corner here and my heart meter up in the top so they were really easy to do again so all I did was drag in the Zelda gameplay and you can see you've got your hearts up in the corner all I did was mask out all of those hearts and pretty much just place them on the layer motion track and that's pretty much it and with the rupee count I just got this picture of the rupee here um, we need to scale and rotate it a bit so bring it right down and rotate it and then I got a font that kind of looks oldish we didn't want like a modern looking font in a game like Zelda it just wouldn't really suit it very much and then I had a count and each time he picked up a rupee I just uh, hit one layer and made the other one visible instantly and it just added up so it looked like a count meter and that's pretty much all I did to create this whole effect and it's just a whole repeating process like most of my edits and then I did a bit of final color correction and put it all together and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching hope you learned something and if you didn't I'm sorry but and if you're not subscribed to my second channel which is this one please do subscribe and if you're just here, make sure you check out my main channel for all my actual edits. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.